You're listening to Sweep the League. Hey, this is George Iceman Gerber, and you're listening to Sweet the League Radio. What up, everybody? It is the Taco Tuesday edition of Sweep the League, brought to you by the greatest taco place in town, La Cocina Taco Truck. Over in New Braunfels, the best street tacos, best quesadillas, hell, the best food around. Louie and his staff is going to take care of you, and they are the major sponsors for Taco Tuesday here on Sweep the League. Smash that like button. Appreciate it, Jacob Eric. Remember, go to our YouTube page. All you got to do is go to YouTube, search at Sweep the League TV. Hit that subscribe button. We are giving away Madden 25. It's coming up here in the next few weeks. Madden 25 is being released. The only way for you to have a chance to win is to be a subscriber on YouTube. So we have the competition coming out. The, the contest is going to put the, the directions and the instructions up for you guys here in a little bit. We'll be sharing it a lot more on social media as well. But again, welcome. It's Tuesday night. We're going to be with you for probably about an hour, a little over an hour tonight. We're going to talk, you know, the Olympics. We had a scare today. Obviously, you got a, possibly a scare tomorrow. We're going to get Derek Irvin in here to talk about that. Also, the Spurs are pretty much done for the offseason. We'll see where they stand right now. And it's some NFL talk. I'm going to get into it a little bit here. The AFC West. <laughs> Is Kansas City truly, truly the number one team in the AFC West? Maybe we'll get Derek's opinion on that as well. Speaking of Derek, Hall of Famer Derek Gervin, Ju- Derek Gervin, I'll say Junior. Derek Gervin joining me tonight. What's going on, Derek? How you doing, man? I'm I'm sporting my Ghostbusters, uh, my Ghost Ballers stuff, Ghost getting ballers. ready to support my brother again. Uh, That's for right. The weekend, out, you know, well, you know, they're here this weekend, uh, Big Three, so I- I'm warming up right now, so I'm doing fine. Yeah, shout out to the big three. You know, they're coming to San Antonio August 4th, which is this Sunday. And if for those of y'all that don't know, George Garvin is a coach for one of the teams. So go out and support the big three. They will be uh, here this weekend in San Antonio. We're trying to make it out there actually on Sunday as well. So we'll keep everybody updated on that as well. So again, shout out to uh, the big three coming. This first segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting. Proud sponsor of Sweep the League Foundation. We here at Sweep the League, we've laid out a big foundation for everybody here. We're all growing and we continue to grow because of you. Why? Because MCS jumped on board with us and they're here to help everybody in the community. They're trying to build a better San Antonio, one project at a time. Call Chris Leha and the boys. They will take care of you. MCS General Contracting, proud sponsors of Sweep the League. Major scare, Derek. Major scare. This. You know, earlier today, this morning with France and Japan. Now, we say major scare because we know France is one of the top teams in the Olympics right now. We don't get a whole lot of Japan. You know, we don't get a whole lot of love, but you got guys like Rui Hachimura. Uh, You got players on Japan. Let's not lie, but the outcome was a lot closer than we expected. That is that was a really close to call this morning for France. Well, first, I'm say good evening, everybody. Man, <laughs> I don't know where to start, but I would say I'm a little upset because I, I don't like to use the word, but I think that um, today it was a little robbery going on in France. Uh, Japan played really well. Uh, I didn't like how it went down uh, in the last quarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rui Hachimura was uh, put out the game. yeah, And I thought that was a problem. And the saddest part, he was put out right after hitting two three-pointers in a row. Yeah. And then we get down to the end of the game. Uh, Japan is up four points. I believe it was 94 to 90 or something at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, the gentleman, uh, Strazo, for uh, France. France takes a three-pointer from the left wing. Mm-hmm. And he makes the basket, but they call a foul. I didn't see any contact. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it was a little home cooking. <laughs> and I think France got got robbed today. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I think Japan got robbed today. It was sad to see. Uh, but it just shows that the competition level is a little higher than people think. And you can't count any of these teams out. So they came up short. But I'm hoping that they can rebound and uh, still have an opportunity to make up for this loss. But, yeah, it was sad to see uh, the referees kind of uh, decide the game at the end. 
Yeah, for Spurs fans out there, obviously everybody has their eyes on Victor Wimbanyama. He had 18 points, 11 rebounds, six assists, two steals, two blocks. Just ama- uh, amazing performance. He did have two turnovers, but let's be real. He put up a lot of stats today. And, you know, Victor's been playing very well in the Olympics. You and I, we're, you and I are going to talk later on in the week when it comes to Victor because you made a comment to me earlier about there's, there's certain things that you're seeing with Victor in the Olympics that you're not liking. Do you want to kind of touch on that a little bit? And then we can actually go into it a little bit later on the week. But you did say there's a little bit there from Victor that you're really not, you're not liking something about Victor Wimanyama in these Olympics. I'm still not liking the physical, how he's not dealing with the physicality, uh, especially on the low post. Um, they went to him a few times on the low post, and, and that's how important uh, Joel Embiid is. Uh, that's why France wanted him so bad. They don't have a low post scorer. Uh, they got a guy who used to play with the Celtics, uh, Yabu Selly, 6'9". Um, of course, you know they have Rudy Gobert. Uh, they have Nick Nicholas Batum. Uh, but they, they just don't have a low post presence as far as a score. And Victor's having problems still uh, dealing with the physicality. He's more of a passer out of the low post. And that's something um, that I'm hoping he's going to, you know, continue to get stronger. But I haven't seen much improvement in the strength uh, area since the end of last season. Yeah, you know, it's funny because we talk about strength. And I remember you posed a question to me uh, when we were talking behind the scenes. You had said, you know, will Victor ever get stronger? And I made, I said, really, you know what? He's in that. That You have that border, that seven foot, the 6'11", 7 foot, 7 one, to where you can get stronger and it not affect your game. But I, I was saying, if you go anywhere between 7'3 on up to get bulky, it's going to affect your game, the physical part of your game. Yeah, you're going to get stronger, but it affects, you know, your gameplay. And that's something that I don't know if I want him to bulk up any more than what he is, even though we know he's got to in order to play physical. But, I mean, if you're Spurs fans, Derek, do you feel like adding muscle to Victor is good or just leave him as is, maybe tone him up a little bit because it will affect the way he plays basketball if he gets too muscular? I don't even think it's the weight, to be honest, Rudy. I just think if you look at his footwork out there when he posts up, Mm -hmm. he doesn't have a wide enough – he doesn't have a wide enough base. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the problem. Uh, he, you know, he's, it's not really the, the strength I'm worried about so much. It's the fact that him establishing his position and he needs to spread those legs a little more. You know, the lower you are in your stance, the stronger yeah. you are. And right. if you look at Victor sometimes, you know, by his size, maybe because of his height, you know that a lot of times you can throw the ball up to him. But if you notice, he just, I, I believe in being able to walk guys down. Um, I played on the low post a lot. And what they call it is walking a guy down and establishing your position. Uh, Shaq was really good at that. Uh, Tim Duncan was really good at that. Yeah. Instead of them making you catch the ball 12 feet from the basket, guys were able to get into their spots 9 or 10 feet from the basket and then establish their position. And that comes from just being on balance, um, having a better base, I'll say. And once he gets that, I think he'll be fine. But he's got to work on that right now. Sometimes he has his legs too close together for me. And that's kind of the reason why in the offseason, I was hoping they would get a big man, you know, to go alongside Victor, because then you would be able to allow, you know, the big guy to play physical against other centers in the league, like a Jokic, like an Embiid. Uh, I mean, hell, even like a Steven Adams, somebody like that, to where Victor doesn't have to be as physical in the block and get kind of beat up in the block. But nonetheless, you know, we're going to see what happens with Victor coming up the upcoming season. He's doing really good in the Olympics right now. Shout out to... uh Kawamura, he had 29 for Japan. But again, I mean, 90 to 94 was your final score at overtime between France and Japan. It just goes to show, like we're saying, the Olympics are the Olympics, man. They're, they're going to be competitive. And these teams are here for a reason. Quick recap. Spain ended up beating Greece 84-77. Canada beat Australia. That, was a, that should have been one of the better games of the day. But it, they won by 10, 93-83. And then Germany, one of Derek's top picks, Germany beat Brazil 86-73. We've got USA basketball tomorrow. They're going to be playing against South Sudan. And we, you know, we don't want to overlook <laughs> South Sudan at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people, oh, well, they beat them with the exhibition. But again, it was very, very close in that exhibition game. We're going to give everybody the, uh, the chance to comment about the South Sudan and Team USA game tomorrow. We talked about it last night. 
are we changing on anything, Derek? I mean, is the, what we saw in the exhibition game between South Sudan and Team USA showed some holes in Team USA, and it showed some big, big issues with Team USA. Again, is there any change in your mind thinking going into tomorrow that Team USA can just blow them out? But if they can, what adjustments do they make? Because this is a game where you and I both have said Halliburton and Tatum need to get some minutes here. I, I can't see them blowing them out. Uh, it's amazing to me. You know, they're favored by 29 points. Uh, mm-hmm. What, well, they were favored the first time by 40? Yeah, 40. So now they drop it down to 29. You're talking about a 30-point win. I, I just can't see that. I think it's going to be a nail-biter. Uh, for one thing, I keep trying to tell people, South Sudan, they have athleticism. They have physicality. And they, they can shoot the ball. I mean, that keeps you in the game against anybody. And then more importantly, they have a true point guard. Uh, he reminds me, he's not Chris Paul, but he plays a little bit like Chris Paul. You're talking about Carleek Jones. Yeah. Carleek is a really good player. Uh, he has a lot of experience. He's not a guy that's just coming around. I think he's like 26 or 27 years old. And he's a really good player. And, uh, you know, they have this kid that's going to Duke, uh, the 17-year-old. Yeah, he he's not even a factor because it's the real deal now. That kid played about six or six minutes, I think, and he had like two points and one rebound. So there's no room for him right now. They're bringing out all their horses, and I think they're going to be ready tomorrow. Uh, Carleek Jones has already said, "USA, we're coming for you," <laughs> and, and I think they are coming for the U.S. I think it's going to go down to the wire and made a better team win. Of course, of course, I want the USA to win. But I think it's going to really, really be a tough game tomorrow at 2 p.m. Yeah, 100%. Welcome, everybody, to the chat. Let's shout them out here. Jacob, Eric, in the chat. Uh, welcome, Joel Cologne, Tim Gonzalez, one of the, the originals with Tim Gonzalez from day one. JC, special leave man himself. Appreciate you joining in. Little Mac is in here. We're talking to us. And, you know, a lot of Little Mac's making the comments as well about, you know, he doesn't see a 29-point win. He sees 10 to 15 at most with the USA coming out on top by 10 to 15. Uh, South Sudan is coming in confident. And again, it's a game where I believe, you know, Kerr and the players are not overlooking South Sudan. This isn't a team that they want to overlook, as you can tell by some of the the, uh, the media coverage out of practices and how they're talking. They're taking it very serious. So, I'm actually glad to see that. But again, you know, one or two slip ups and South Sudan can easily pull off the upset so far of the tournament if that if they were to happen on that. They they were down at halftime by six uh, against Puerto Rico. Uh, and then the second half, they picked up the intensity, the defensive intensity ramped up. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, usually when you do that, uh, the shots start going in on the other end because you're getting a lot, some turnovers. Uh, you're just getting a lot of momentum. And I thought that they played well in the second half. But Puerto Rico played what scored, I think, like uh, 40-something in the first half or whatever it may be, 50. But in the second half, they shut them down to 25 points. And I, I think they just match up with the U.S. Um, if you look at them, they deep, Rudy. Yeah, they are. And they have yeah. size. And what's our biggest issue? They wanted Steve Kerr, wanted Joel Embiid because we needed that size. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to be tested tomorrow. I don't even know if it's going to be a 10 or 15 point game because I think uh, Carly Jones is a really good leader. I, I do expect us to win the game, but man, it's going to be a nail biter. Yeah, it is. And real quick, we're not taking phone calls tonight only. I've got to work on the uh, the phone from last night. It was coming in, but it wasn't spooting out on the uh, the stream. So I'm working on that. So Anybody trying to call in tonight, there's no phone calls tonight. We'll get hopefully barking by tomorrow. But little Max asking a question. Kind of mentioned it yesterday about Steve Kerr. Y'all confidence in Kerr's rotation? He's not. I agree with little Mac. I'm not confident in the rotation because, again, there's no preparation for Team USA. This whole rotation, this whole, you know, idea of who's playing, you know, and all the scouting and everything should have been done. Honestly, should have been done years ago. Not just, you know, in the last couple of months. Kirk can't fix this in the last couple of months. It should have been well prepared a long time ago. So, no, 100%, I am not confident in Steve Kerr's rotation. What about you, Derek? I'm, I'm concerned because I, I coach a club basketball team here, uh, some 10th graders. 
And I was doing the five players in and five players out. And I was only doing that, uh, you know, just because I had told the parents a lot of these guys hadn't got an opportunity to play while they were doing, you know, during the school year. So when it came to playoff time, I didn't do the rotation to five in, five out. I went by what made sense. And I think that's what Kerr is going to have to do. You can't just go into this game tomorrow saying, I'm going to play uh, Derek White. Well, they start actually Drew Holiday, Steph, Devin Booker, LeBron, and Embiid. Yeah. I don't know if that's the lineup for tomorrow because we're going to have to have some guys that can, first of all, put the ball on the ground. I don't think they're going to be letting us get all these three-pointers, especially after we played Serbia and we went 17 for 30 from the three-point line. So the way to beat the USA is to make them put the ball on the floor. As you know, we do a lot of one-on-one play. Yeah. And a lot of times that causes bad shots, quick shots and bad shots as the shot clock is running down. I think that's going to be Royal Ivy. That's going to be what they're trying to do to us tomorrow, Luau Dang. Remember, those two guys are NBA. Yeah. And they, they know what the NBA players are about. They've studied us religiously, and they're going to try to make it as hard for us as they can. They're going to get up on end guys. And we're going to need some guys. That's why I say tomorrow Tatum's going to be important because we're going to need his strength off the dribble, him getting to the basket. We're going to need Tyrese Halliburton so, okay, so we can change the pace of the game and try to maybe outrun South Sudan at certain points in the game. But I, I think uh, they match up very well against us. Of course, I'm USA, but I still say, man, it's going to be a tough one that people need to tune in. So I looked at the rotation this morning, and if it's me, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm leaving two guys in the starting five that we saw uh, against uh, Serbia. I'm leaving Steph Curry, and I'm leaving LeBron as the two guys in the starting five. Now, I'm probably putting KD in the starting five to get off to a, you know, a better start. <laughs> they better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just me. I'm actually switching out and beat and putting Anthony Davis in there. I like him in there with those four. But at the other guard position, I would definitely would probably put Tyrese Halliburton in there to kind of just get that run and, you know, going. I love what Drew Holiday's doing, but I think you've got to get off to a very quick start against South Sudan. And that's the reason why I went with that lineup. If you've got to change the lineup, what is it? And after that, I want to get into the MB talk because then we got to take our first commercial break. But what do you got to line up? Uh, would you go with the same lineup? Except for I, I'm going with Embiid, and we'll talk about why in a little while. But uh, the only one I'm taking out the lineup, the starting lineup, is Devin Booker. And the reason I'm taking him out is because I'm inserting KD into the front into the front um, front court. Yeah. So you, I still say you go with Drew Holiday and Steph, and then you go with LeBron, KD, and Embiid. And I, we'll talk about a little later why you know why I said Embiid. <laughs> but I think you keep him in the lineup uh, because one thing you don't want to get Anthony Davis in early foul trouble. Uh, I'd rather MB get in early foul trouble than Anthony Davis. And yeah. Anthony is another one. You know, he doesn't deal with physicality very well. And so he made some silly fouls. Even against Serbia, he got two quick fouls. And he's still adjusting to the way they call the uh, the FIBA game. Kind of yeah. reminded me of Tim Duncan when Tim went through what he went through. And he's, you know, trying to get used to the way the referees are calling it down on the low post. So, yeah, I would just take out Devin Booker, um, and I would put in KD. That would be my starting five, LeBron, KD, MB, uh, Drew Holiday, and Steph. Yeah, you know, and I mean, the reason why I like uh, I like AD in the starting five is because I, I want to be able to run on South Sudan, and that's where I think Embiid kind of slows him down a little bit. But also, I also look at the physicality from Embiid for me. I think would portray better in that second unit, because if you look at the second unit, you've got like Derek White, you've got Jason Tatum, you would have Drew Holiday, Devin Booker. It's more of a lineup that would fit for Joel in the second unit. For That's just, again, for me, but the Halliburton one, that, that's the guy who I would really want in there just to kind of push that ball, push that ball. You know, imagine, you know, him and Steve, uh, uh, Steph Curry just running around and, you know, getting to their jump shot, getting to the open shots, Halliburton making it tough for, you know, defenders to catch up to him. That's that's my starting five. Um, I think Tim Gonzalez says your project starting five was Curry, Tyrese, Katie, James, AD. Yeah, that would be my starting five. But before we go to commercial break, you know, you you made some comments about Joel Embiid as well. 
And, you know, just to kind of paint the picture for everybody, because in San Antonio, we love painting murals. So let's paint the Joel Embiid mural for Derek Gervin <laughs> on Team USA here. Joel had the opportunity to play, you know, for France and decided to play for Team USA. Now, if he plays for France, I, I would almost start engraving that gold medal for France because it'd be very difficult for a team to beat a Joel Embiid, a Rudy Gobert, and a Victor Wimanyama trio. Very difficult. But he decided to play for Team USA. So Stephen A. Smith, who does apparently listen to Sweep the League and to you and follows you on Facebook, I'm sure, is probably going to use this. We'll just throw that shout out to Stephen A. Smith. But let's say you hear it here first. Derek, the Joel Embiid situation for you, what's got you turning in your mind for that? Well, as you know, I had thought about that a lot and tried to figure out why Kerr had him in the lineup. And I honestly think that they had a conversation before the Olympics, the Olympics started and Joel had to make a decision. And as you know, he was talking to Cameroon got knocked out, so they didn't even qualify. Yeah. So it only brought it down to France or the USA. And I believe that he had a conversation with Steve Kerr and that I believe Joel told him, if I'm going to be in the starting lineup, I'll, I will play for the United States. If I'm not in the starting lineup, I will go play for France. And I really think Kerr didn't want that to happen because you just picture, you mentioned Gobert and Wimben Yama and MB, and then they also have a guy who used to play with the Boston Celtics, a very strong guy, Yabba Selly, yeah. who can uh, post up or shoot outside. And then you got to remember they have Nicholas Batum. And so those five are very formidable for any team. And then you got pretty decent guard play. So I think uh, MB kind of pulled out his, uh, his ace in the hole <laughs> put me in the starting lineup or I'm gone. And I think that put a lot of pressure on uh, Steve Kerr. And let me say quickly why, Rudy, because think about this. If MB plays for France, mm -hmm. now you just have AD who's foul prone, who's not the strongest guy. And then you have undersized Bam out of bio. So say one of them were to get in foul trouble, or even if they didn't, you still got to match up with one of the other big guys. And that means now you got to put KD or LeBron into that role and make them start tussling with one of those big guys down, you know, down low, or you put them on M on uh, Victor and then he takes them away from the rim. So it would have just made it hard for us. And I think Kerr and all his group, uh, Mark Few and Spolster and Lou really sat down and thought about it and looked at what was the best option. And the best option was for Joel Embiid to be playing for the United States and I'm going to show you how smart the fans are in France. <laughs> they boo Joel every time they see his face because they know if they had Joel Embiid, they had a very, very good chance of winning the gold medal. Yeah, again, if Joel plays with France, that's a pretty – you you and you were saying, well, that's like the triple towers. And I said, no, that, that would be the skyline. That would be the first skyline that we'd <laughs> ever see. And that would be a damn good skyline to have if you were Team France. So that's, you know, the reasoning behind Joel Embiid for Team USA and Derek Irvin's opinion. When we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more. I'll make a quick shout-out for the Olympics here that happened today. Uh, good shout out to Simone Biles. Also talk about a little Spurs basketball. We think we're kind of done with that. And then we'll end the show real quick here with uh, some AFC West uh, football talk. The Chiefs, are they really the best team in that division? We're going to get into that here in a little bit. Hall of Famer Derek Irvin, Rudy Compass Jr. We'll be back. Are you looking for a contracting company that gets the job done right the first time? Look no further than MCS General Contracting. MCS specializes in top quality concrete work, including patios, driveways, foundations, and swimming pools. The team of experts are dedicated to delivering exceptional results and unparalleled customer satisfaction. At MCS General Contracting, they're not just hardworking, they're local. Based in San Antonio, they are committed to building relationships and trust within the community. That's why MCS guarantees your satisfaction. They pride themselves on getting the job done right the first time, every time. So why wait? Contract MCS General Contracting today to schedule your project and experience the difference for yourself. MCS General Contracting. Building a better San Antonio, one project at a time. 
proud sponsors of Sweep the League. Hey guys, are you ready for a flavor explosion? Look no further than La Casina Taco Truck, serving up the best street tacos and quesadillas in New Braunfels. With a five-star rating and rave reviews, they're not just a taco truck. They are a taste sensation. La Casina staff is the best in town and pride themselves on making every customer feel like family. Whether you're feeding a crowd or just satisfying your own cravings, they've got you covered because no order is too big or too small for them there. Louie and his staff are all about customer satisfaction and they love their community. Don't worry, San Antonio friends. They're just a short trip away to New Braunfels. So why wait? Come visit La Cucina Taco Truck today and taste the difference for yourself. That's La Cucina Taco Truck, where every bite is a fiesta. Proud sponsors of Sweep the League. Hey there, sports fans. I'm Ashley, your go-to girl for all things sports here on Sweep the League. Welcome to our daily news reports where we'll be covering the latest updates from the NFL, NBA, WNBA, college sports, and more. We're thrilled to be a part of the rapidly growing Sweep the League network, bringing you fast and fresh news updates every day. Make sure to subscribe to Sweep the League TV on YouTube for even more in-depth analysis and discussions with our amazing team Monday through Friday. Huge thank you to our incredible sponsors in San Antonio for their support. We couldn't do it without you. So let's get started. I'm Ashley, and I'll be sweeping the league for you every day. Stay tuned for the latest sports news and updates. Pops the mastermind, got the team what we need. Five rings deep, we the dynasty kings. From the Alamo Dome to the banners, we bring respect to all right, welcome back to Sweep the League. Hall of Famer Derek Gervin, Rudy Campos Jr. We are coming to you live on this Taco Tuesday. Shout out to MCS General Contracting, La Cocina Taco Truck, Special Leaf Tea, and Castro and Sun Solar. Also to a great partner of ours, that is Locked on Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Shout out to all of them out there, all part of the Sweep the League family. We all work together. So this next segment is brought to you by both MCS General Contracting and La Cocina Taco Truck. Again, La Cocina Taco Truck, the best three tacos. Guess how the is around. You know what? It's in your Braunfels, but it's a short drive to get you satisfied. Head over to La Cocina Taco Truck located in New Braunfels. Louis and the staff will take care of you. Guarantee you're going to walk away full and satisfied. That's La Cocina Taco Truck. Quick shout out, Derek, to uh, Simone Biles, man. I mean, more gold. Just more, more gold. Going down is what? Can we say going down is the greatest Olympiad of all time? I mean, Michael Phelps is there, but there's got to be a point where we consider her, you know, either neck and neck or possibly higher than Phelps. Man, first I want to send congratulations to the whole team. Uh, but man, the, team the woman great. has done some just pheno phenomenal things. Uh, if you really look at it, to me, uh, she's right there. I'm going to put it right there with Michael Phelps because what he did was also just off the charts. Yeah. But, yeah, man, it's like every we expect. Uh, remember, we had uh, so many people that have done it before, Nadia Coleman Nietzsche. Uh, we had Mary Lou Retton and it's been so many. But, man, Simone Biles, to me, has separated herself. And I, and I think she's just been great for the sport. And as little as she is, man, the lady can get 12 feet up in the air. <laughs> and, yeah. And I, it makes me laugh. I was actually in the room the other day in a bedroom, and I was looking up at the ceiling, right? So yeah. I'm like, man, this girl can jump almost up into the ceiling. And she's only what five feet, maybe four eleven, five feet. Yeah, let's just say yeah, five she, feet. She, definitely. Yeah, she gets my vote for uh, definitely one of the greatest ever. I put her right next to Michael Phelps, and I got a story in Carl Lewis as well. Yeah. So our special leave, special moment of the night is definitely Simone Biles joining. You know, a major, major amount of Olympic. Uh, greatest of all time athletes, like we mentioned, Carl Lewis, Michael Phelps. You got to throw Simone Biles in there. Shout out to. Simone Biles. Now, uh, this again, this next segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting and Special Leaf Tea and also La Cucina Taco Truck. Spurs, man. You know, we saw Devontae Graham 
He's uh, He got signed today. We also saw Dominic Barlow. Both of them were free agents. They both were let go by the San Antonio Spurs. Been quiet. The Larry Markin and stuff has been quiet. He intends not to sign his deal with Utah until after August 6th. So it gives him a little bit of time to maybe make a move. Larry has come out and said he wants to stay in Utah. He likes it in Utah. Again, you know, you, as a player, you're going to say what you're going to say. I mean, you're not going to really disrespect a, an organization that's done, you, never done anything wrong to him. They're gonna, he's going to talk right by them, but he intends to sign after August 6th. So it gives him, like I said, a little bit of time to make a move. Pretty much feels like the Spurs are done making moves until the trade deadline when if they're not in any type of contention, maybe play in contention, you're going to get a lot of teams calling about Chris Paul, about Harrison Barnes, their availability, because those guys are difference makers when it comes to playoff teams and possible final teams. So as we sit, again, I want to get through training camp. I want to get through preseason. But as we sit, are we still not that high on San Antonio? <laughs> Man, you putting pressure on me. And no I got my pressure. brother's shirt on today. No pressure. <laughs> Give him 50 wins. Give him 60 wins. It doesn't matter. No, me. no, because, you know, I'm going to be honest. With, now, one thing about this show is we're honest. Uh, sometimes people yeah. might not like what we say, but we don't mean to offend anyone. No. Uh, as currently constructed, they brought in Harrison Barnes. Okay, you got Chris Paul, uh, uh, older Chris Paul. And, you know, I'm a CP3, uh, you know, point God. Yeah. But that was Chris Paul from the past. Uh, I don't know if we can find that guy again. And then I like Harrison Barnes, uh, but I think he needs a, a, a better supporting cast around him, uh, a couple stars or whatever, and we only have Victor here. And I think uh, right now, Rudy, out of 82-game season, we won, what, 22 last year. I'm still going to go with 30 games. I just can't see us when I mean, it's too loaded. In the Western Conference, and teams play a lot harder now. With the ever since they've uh, instituted the play-in tournament, you can't mess around. You can't take any games off. Got every game matters because yeah. uh, you're vying for position. And I think on that alone, teams are not going to take the Spurs lightly anymore. Uh, with they know that the Spurs play hard for 48 minutes, and teams are going to bring out their best from the beginning of the season. So I think 30 games. I just don't think we've done enough. To to uh, give Victor a chance to succeed. Yeah, and that's the way I kind of feel. I mean, you got him at the 30. I'm, I'm still right around that 28 to 30, you know, win mark right now. I think Vegas still has them around 30. I think they had him at 35 at one point, 36. I think I've seen him at 33. Wow. So, again, it's not play-in worthy yet. It's improvement. I think they're going to improve. You're going to see Victor add a few more wins from last season. I mean, there's no doubt about that. He's going to add a few more wins. He's going to be a better player. But again, I, as as constructed, I, I don't see playoffs. I don't see play-in. I see improvement, but I don't see leaps and bound improvement. I just think like, okay, we're going to see just a couple of games. Again, last year, they lost a lot of games at the end of the at the end of the game. They lost a lot because of turnovers. They couldn't take care of the ball. They didn't have anybody other than Trey Jones. But again, if you got Chris Paul, just those turnovers aren't going to happen with Chris Paul in the lineup. So you're going to win, you know, the four, five, six games that you should have won uh, because of turnovers. So that in 10 adds to the 28 wins, 29 wins. And that's kind of what we both feel right now. Still, I mean, we're still around that 30 win mark again. We're going to see what happens. We don't know what's going to happen. They can still make a trade. They can, you know, still do something in the offseason to improve their their record from last year. So we'll see. We just want to make that up. We just want to bring that up here because uh, people were, you know, a couple people were asking, like, well, where do the Spurs stand now? Are, are they done? Are they, you know, going to make any more moves? They're coy, man. They're not going to say anything. They're not going to tell anybody what they're doing. So, I mean, how many more moves can you actually expect them to make? There's, there's not much out there. I don't see much. And then I see you got guys like Jeremy Grant out there, but I guess they don't want to fill that void. They brought in Harrison Barnes. Yeah. Uh, you know, they talking about Jeremy Grant probably ended up with the Lakers. So it's going to be some moves, but I'm like you uh, probably around the uh, trade deadline. And they're going to ride it out right now with Vassell and Keldon and those guys, uh, Sohan. Uh, I still don't know what's going to happen. Is, is Zach Collins right now? Still, he's still on the roster. I think, yeah, I think he's still a spur. 
Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. it's not much different than last year. I mean, they brought in Harrison Ingram, but he's going to be on a two-way contract. Yeah. So, you know, he's not going to move the needle. Uh, I just think if it was – we're talking about a younger Chris Paul, then I would give them a lot more wins, like a 14-15 game improvement. Mm-hmm. But as with the team that they have right now, you're looking right behind me. You see that UTSA number 30? I'm being <laughs> nice giving them 30 wins, and that, that's where I stand right now, 30 and 52. And, you know, Stefan Castle's going to make a difference. He's not going to make a huge difference, but he's going to improve this team. I, I love Stefan Castle. That was a hell of a draft pick by them. Uh, he was my number one guy on the Spurs big board. He was my number one prospect in the draft. So the Spurs hit a home run with Stefan Castle, but we can't expect him to come in as a rookie and dominate. As we all know, Pop doesn't really play rookies a whole lot, you know, that we know, I mean, that we've seen. You're not you're not Victor Wimanyama. I mean, he's not Victor Wimanyama, but... Stephon Castle is probably not going to be a starter. I'd love for him to start, but I know he's not going to be a starter. But he's going to help the team a little bit more. Before I get into the uh, the role for Keldon here, uh, Joel Colon made a comment. He says, guys, how can you even compare 28 medals for Phelps to 8 for Biles? Now, the comparison isn't so much on the medal count for me. It's when you talk about greatest of all times. You know, we're talking Phelps for the guys, Biles, you know, on the women's side. But overall, what she's accomplished as well, I mean, I, you got to put her. I'm not saying she's the greatest Olympiad of all time, but she's got to be in the conversation for me. I mean, she's she's got the resume for it. And again, you know, I hate the whole greatest of all time talk, especially in the NBA. I hate it because your your goats, my goat, we're all different. We're all going to have different goats. It doesn't really matter. It's all goats of eras, man. I mean. You know, in the 80s and 90s, what is it, Jordan, you know, early, you know, it could be Duncan in, you know, the, the 2000s. So goats in different eras are goats in different eras. But that's the reason why we brought up Simone Biles. <laughs> and, and, you swim more, and you swim more events. If he got 28 medals, I mean, he did a lot of swimming. Yeah. She hasn't participated in 28 events. So, of course, he's going to have more medals. Uh, no one's trying to discredit Michael Phelps. But no. I do. Simone has done a lot in her field, what she has done. It ranks up there with what Michael Phelps has done in his field. Yeah, and you know, uh, fun fact: I uh, I I interviewed an uh, Olympian, and that was Summer Sanders one time. Everybody forgets Summer Sanders. Oh Everybody, boy, Summer Sanders. Yeah, she's a great person to talk to. And the first person, the first thing you think of with Summer Sanders was the uh, the show. Was it was it uh, in, it wasn't Inside the NBA? What was it? Uh, it was with Ahmad Rashad. It was the NBA Inside show. Inside the NBA. Inside. It stuff. was right. Inside, inside, oh, inside stuff. stuff. Yeah, Inside Stuff with uh, Mod Rashad. That was a fun interview. Summer Sanders is a great interview. So, yeah, just a little uh, back uh, backtrack on that. But uh, Little Max asking, what role do we see for Keldon Johnson? Again, I think Keldon is the sixth man. He's the first guy off the bench. He's the energy guy coming off the bench. I don't see him being a starter until we maybe see an injury. I think his starting days are behind him for the San Antonio Spurs. If he's going to start, it's probably going to be on another team. But for me, Keldon has got to be that sixth man, Derek. He is. You already have the lineup. You have Chris Paul. You have Devin Vassell. You have Harrison Barnes. Uh, you probably you have Sohan at the four. And you have Victor at the five. Or you could well, guess what? They might try uh, Sohan at the five. Whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. I think that's the lineup. And I don't see Zach Collins starting. And I think Keldon, without a doubt, is going to be the sixth man because you need that uh, punch off the bench, that guy who can get you 20 points on any given night and get you five or six tough rebounds and uh, the hustle plays. And that's Keldon Johnson. And I think he's accepted that. He knows now uh, that as they move forward, he's a guy that's going to come off the bench. And I think he uh, accept that role, and I think he'll do it very well. Yeah, it's going to be, like I said, he's going to be the sixth man. He's going to be the first guy off the bench. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, de- definitely a role that Keldon, I think he's going to be used to playing, which is fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. doesn't mean his minutes go down. He can still get a good amount of minutes just coming off the bench. I mean, how we've had great bench players before, Manu Ginobili, you know, you can name a few of them. You know, he's no Manu, but, you know, he's going to be able to get a lot of minutes when it comes to the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, you know, um, Joel, again, I see Joel's comment about the comparison and even close. He goes, I'm, he completely disagrees. And again, we that's why Sweep the League is one of the better shows because you can disagree with us and that's perfectly fine. We love to have conversations with you guys 
Once we get the phone back up and working again, you want to call us and talk to us. That is 100% you know, easy for you to do as well. So we love the back and forth between everybody. We're all friends. We're all family at the end. So appreciate you commenting, Joel. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and then Tim was wanting to know about your thoughts on the Team USA 3x3 three three game. Uh, people were asking, you know, why don't they have better players on the three on three? But we'll get into that in a little bit here. Little Mac asking, why is Champagne an NBA player? He why is he on the team again? Why? You know, I mean, he's a shooter, oh, but oh, 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 oh. that guy I mean, can play though. Let him know. More let him know. I'm, not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. But do you let him know? He, he, I don't think he's a bad player at all. Uh, that's why he's still on the roster. And you got to remember, when the Spurs have these practices, they see what these guys are capable of. Yeah. We only see them when they're actually out there under the bright lights. But when you practice with guys every day or four or five days or whatever it may be, you know what they have inside of them and what they're capable of. I watched him last year. I thought he was a pretty good player. It's hard to play spot duty, I'll call it. And you know, that's how I came in, Rudy. I had to work my way up into the starting lineup before I got hurt. You don't get the same opportunities. You don't get the same looks that you would get when you're, when you're an established player. So you basically only going to get, what, four or five minutes here and there, and you have to make the best of it. And I thought he did that quite well last year, and that's why he's still on the roster. He's not brought in to be a superstar. He's brought in to be a piece of the puzzle. And I think when they need him, uh, he proved that he could play under pressure, and I don't think he's a bad player at all. And I think he has a bright future. Yeah, and Tim, I, I did pay the telephone bill. I got I to gotta pay the other bill, I guess, the other bill that I've got to worry about. So I did pay the telephone bill. We're, we'll get the phone working again, Tim. Don't worry. We'll definitely <laughs> get it working. We're going to take a quick commercial break on the way back. We're going to talk some NFL before we end the show. Again, it's kind of about the AFC West because a couple of people in the media that I've, I've overheard, and I'm trying to figure out why why Kansas City is not getting a whole lot of love. I've I, I have said before, I don't expect them to three-peat. That's one thing I, think I don't expect to happen. And I'll explain why a little bit more and maybe why they're not the best team in the AFC West. With Hall of Famer Derek Irvin, it's Rudy Compost Jr. When we get back, we'll end the show with the NFC, AFC West talk here on Sweep the League. We'll be back. Howdy from Texas. You've got to be tired of the sizzling electric bills in the Texas heat, right? Well, partner, we've got the solution for you. Introducing Castro and Sun Solar, harnessing the power of the sun to save you some serious cash. Their top-notch solar panels will have you soaking up the savings in no time. Imagine lower electric bills, a reduced carbon footprint, and the satisfaction of going green. Their expert team will take care of everything from installation to maintenance. We're talking hassle-free, worry-free, and stress-free solar solutions. So why wait? Join the solar revolution with Castro and Sun Solar. Let the Texas sun shine bright and your savings shine even brighter. Castro and Sun Solar, empowering your home one sunbeam at a time. Call them today, and let's get this solar party started. Can you imagine a world where nature meets wellness, where every sip you take nourishes your body and soul? Introducing Special Leaf Tea, a line of 100% natural, ready-to-drink iced teas crafted to boost your immunity and energy. With four unique flavors to choose from, as in hibiscus blueberry, tangerine ginger, pomegranate blueberry, or the original, you can indulge in the perfect blend of taste and nutrition. Their teas are carefully crafted with two times the antioxidants and no added sugar. They're known to help with blood pressure, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, cholesterol, weight management, and even provide natural energy without caffeine. Join the movement towards natural wellness Order now at www.specialleaf.com and start sipping your way to a healthier, happier you. Special Leaf Tea. Nature in every sip. Proud sponsors of Sweet Believe. Spurs fans, are you ready? 
Stay ahead of the game of the San Antonio Spurs with the best coverage in the business. Tune in to Locked On Spurs, the daily podcast that brings you expert analysis, exclusive interviews, and all the latest news and updates for your silver and black. Join Jeff Garcia, the most informative and entertaining host in the game, as he breaks down all Spurs news and notes, interviews the biggest names, and keeps you locked into all things Spurs. From Monday to Friday, get ready to start your day with the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out on the expert opinions, the hot takes, and the can't-miss guests. Make sure you're locked in with Locked On Spurs. Subscribe to their YouTube channel now and stay ahead of the game all season long. Locked On Spurs. It's the best Spurs coverage in the business. Don't miss out. All right, that is the Wemby song, The Crown, brought to you by STL and SOTB Music. We here at Sweep the League have launched a music uh, station, not station, but a music uh, side of things here, dedicated to a lot of sports and dedicated to a lot of stuff. So be sure to look out for more music coming out from STL and SOTB. This last segment is brought to you by MCS General Contracting, brought to you by La Cocina Taco Truck, Special Leaf Tea, and Castro and Sun Solar. Oh, shout out to all of our sponsors here for Sweep the League. So we want to end the show with the NFL talk. Now, no Cowboy talk. There's really no Cowboy news other than the fact that apparently there were no fans today at the Cowboy practice. So people were <laughs> up in arms over that. But hey, you know what? It's, it's early, man. It's practice time. It's training camp. You got to relax on that. <laughs> hey, Rudy, it was empty, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I looked at it. They had a couple of people standing on the get like the fence area. Oh man, yeah, but it's early, so it's it's early. You know, I, I'd be more worried if people aren't showing up to Jerry World during games. Then I'll be a little bit worried, but nonetheless, I mean, we've got preseason kicking off. I believe this week is preseason is kicking off, so we're gonna get the Hall of Fame game, but. Going to AFC West talk. Again, we, we jump all over the place, but we talk about one specific thing when we mention it. We want to talk about AFC West. Now, Kansas City's a darling. I mean, they're they're most people's pick to be the repeat, repeat, repeat Super Bowl champs. We don't really see it. I know I don't. But a team that is being talked about that should struggle, but they're really not, are the Chargers. Now, you got Harbaugh as the coach. You got Herbert, so it gives you a fighting chance. But then you start looking at They added, I know, J.K. Dobbins, who's very injury-prone, but they also added Gus Edwards. I mean, they added the backfield from Baltimore. They've got Joshua Palmer, who's kind of unproven still, but he is making his way. But a guy that is really standing out is Ladd McConkey, the rookie coming out. Possibly a wide receiver one could have another Puka Nakua-type season. The Chargers are kind of being overlooked, and that's why some people are saying, could they be the best team in the AFC West, Dirk? Yeah, they could. Um, they don't have the Chiefs 100%. Uh, it, this would be, what, the ninth year in a row that the Chiefs will win a division if they were to do that? I believe so, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because I know um, the Chargers have had to make a lot of uh, changes and they brought in a lot of uh, new pieces. And so maybe it might take another year. I don't know, but I know one thing they have, and that's a guy that's a proven champion, and that's Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. And I believe when you put him with a, a NFL team and you give him time to be there night in and night out, Mm -hmm. that's a team that I would take very serious. Uh, I've always been a big fan of his. I thought he was a great coach at Michigan, and I'm going to forever be grateful for him for giving us our championship uh, last season. But I, I think they're going to be pressing the, char uh, the, pressing the Chiefs. But I'm going to get the Chiefs a slight edge. But yeah. as we know, man, anything can happen. One, the Chiefs are only one injury 
uh, from not repeating. So, yeah, I think the Chargers are definitely their biggest obstacle in the conference and in the, in the West. I don't think the Raiders are ready yet. Um, I want to see Antonio Pierce and his team do well. I definitely don't think the Broncos are going to do well. They still have competition with Knicks and Zach Wilson and Jared Stidham. So I'm not going to count them in at all. But, yeah, I think the Chargers are going to be right there. And depending on what happened, it might come down to when they play each other, um, the head the head matchup might decide it. So I think it's going to be a close one. So full disclosure, we're not saying that the Chargers are going to beat the Chiefs and have win the division. We're not. I'm not saying that at all. So people commenting that might be commenting. I'm trying to look the comments now. We're not saying they're going to win. It's just kind of people talking about people. Are, teams are overlooking the Chargers, and a lot of people in the media are overlooking the Chargers, and you really can't overlook them. Rudy, why don't people like um, – do they realize how good Justin Herbert is? That's a perfect question because I think people – people realize he's really good, but – it's funny. He gets the Philip Rivers vibe from me. Really good, but can he win? I think that's where a lot of people look at it. And that's every damn Charger, you know, quarterback for a while because even Drew Brees was, he didn't become a Super Bowl champion until he went to the Saints. So I think that. Yeah, did, we, overlook him. did we think Matthew Stafford could win? Did we think Jared Goff, I mean, Jared Goff could win? I mean, you just look at the NFL period. There's sometimes there's certain guys that just finally have a breakthrough. And when you're talking about Herbert, it's not like you're talking about a slouch. You're talking yeah. about a top 10 quarterback. And I think he's going to continue to get better. Uh, you know who my guy is, Josh Allen. But I put Josh, uh, Justin Herbert right up there in the same category. And I, I think he makes them a dangerous team. And plus, you put him with. Jim Harbaugh, I can't overlook them and just come out and say the Chiefs are going to just win a division. You know, and last year, a lot of people failed to, or maybe they don't fail, they just don't realize that it wasn't so much Kansas City's offense that won that Super Bowl and got them back to the Super Bowl. It was their defense. And they took a pretty big loss on their secondary when Snead ended up signing with the Titans. So, Chris Jones, he's kind of banged up. He's going to be ready to go. But, I mean, the Chiefs' defense, is uh, it, it took a hit. And last year, the reason why they won that Super Bowl was because of their defense. I, I mean, I know Patrick Mahomes is going to put up numbers. Let's not lie. We're not bashing on Patrick Mahomes. And he got a, he got a few more weapons in Hollywood Brown and Worthy. I, I, I mean, he's ready to go. He's got weapons again. But, again, the defense is the one that took the hit this year. So. Are they going to repeat or well, three-peat? Um, again, I, I say no. It's very, very oh, difficult see, no. to win back-to-back. -back. But three in a row is just almost unheard of. And you know what? I hope they make us eat our words because that would be awesome. I don't, I'm always like one to say, you know what? We were wrong. We were wrong. No big deal. But as of right now, yeah, I don't see it happening. Uh, little Mac is saying he doesn't see Kansas City winning the AFC. He has Buffalo, which is one of your teams. He has them winning the AFC. I am. I fortunately am still going with the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 because they have a Super Bowl defense. And if healthy, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're they're a stacked team from top to bottom on both sides of the ball, if healthy. So that's my pick. But what do you think about Buffalo coming out of AFC? I, you know, I'm a Buffalo fan right behind my Detroit Lions, but I, I think uh, I will give the Jets the nod. Uh, I just think Aaron's going to bring uh, something special to the Jets, uh, this is the best team overall that he's probably had in his career. When you're talking about on both sides of the ball, yeah. And I think uh, he's going to be excited to come back and kind of make up for um, you know missing time. I think you know things just happen for a reason. Do you look at Jordan Love getting this new contract? Uh, I think he's uh, Aaron is the type of guy that always finds something to motivate him, kind of like Tom Brady. And yeah. people say that he's only won one Super Bowl. Uh, but let me correct people. Most people that have played that game win no Super Bowls. So the fact that he won one, uh, it gives him another opportunity to win two. I, I think he's going to be healthy this year. And for me, I would have the Jets coming out of the winning the conference. Uh, for me, that would be my pick as well, over Buffalo and over the Chiefs. Yeah, hey, we really, gotta... you remember this, though? Didn't Mahomes count? Mahomes was 
kind of exposed a little bit yes uh, last year in the regular season. He didn't have he wasn't playing like the MVP that we've seen uh, in the past. And some of the breaks went Kansas City's way. And I, I don't think Kansas City is going to be the best team in the conference. Yeah, they really did. But, you know, it, it goes back to, man, you know, what we talk about with defensive coordinators. You give them time, they're going to find weaknesses in your game. And you know what? It's not so much that they are going to find, you know, the bad things in Mahomes. They're going to find everything around him. They're going to find the holes in the receivers. They're going to find the holes in the line. They're going to say, okay, you're running with Pacheco. We're doing this. Well, we're going to box. We're going to, we're going to stack this many in the box. They're going to do a whole lot. So another year of checking out the Chiefs offense, you're hoping that Andy Reid makes some kind of some kind of uh, changes on his offensive side. But we'll see. And you know what? Like I did say, we're going to get into a whole lot more uh, talk when it comes to NFL football. We're going to do our preview. We're going to do our college football <laughs> preview. Joe Cologne, as a Patriot fan, every time someone says, imagine the Jets, I'm really hard to say F the Jets. Why? Because F the Jets, let's go Pat. Love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it, Joe. Thanks for bringing that energy, man. Love the energy here. But we're going to get into more NFL talk. We're going to get into, of course, our college uh, preview here. Football is going to dominate for a while, like I say, until basketball comes full, full blast again. So... We'll be back here tomorrow. Uh, we're going to talk probably some more NFL tomorrow. We're going to talk about what happens with South Sudan and Team USA. Also give you a bunch of reminders when it comes to the contest we have coming up. So be sure, be sure to go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. It's at Sweep the League TV. Subscribe there. Find us on TikTok. We're going to be doing a massive TikTok giveaway. We get to 1,000 people on our TikTok. It's brand new. So Get on there. Subscribe to that. There's When I say massive, it's huge. A big, big giveaway on TikTok. More details to come. So until we sweep the league again tomorrow, shout out to all of our sponsors, MCS General Contracting, Special Leaf, La Casina Taco Truck, and Castor and Sons uh, Solar. Also, shout out to Jeff Garcia, Locked on Spurs. And we'll be making an appearance. We'll be making an appearance at Big Texas Comic Con, San Antonio, Texas Convention Super Center. Broody. Yes, sir. Can I say this quickly? Because I'm going to, okay. you and I are going to talk more about this um, with the with the big three being here this weekend. Uh, check your schedule because we might have to get out there and uh, check that out, man. Of course, you know I got some inside info of yeah. when we can go see them. Uh, they play on Sunday, but on Saturday, you and I might need to make a trip um, to go say hi to some of these guys, man. And then that'll give us something else to talk about on the show. And we might even be able to bring on a few people. I wouldn't mind saying hello to Gary Payton this weekend myself. Oh, the glove for sure. For sure. So be, be on the lookout. You know, we're going to be doing a lot, a lot of stuff here, especially this weekend with the big three in town. We'll try to bring you as much, much as possible real quick. Before we go there, Chrissy's in here is asking, where's coach Gio sexy behind? I, you know, coach Gio called in, he called in tonight. He, the guy has part of his NIL deal with sweep the league was he needed 25,000 PTO hours. I, I don't know why, but he needed 25,000. So I had to give it to him. So he's using his PTO time tonight, but he should be back hopefully tomorrow. So again, appreciate everybody joining us here tonight. Shout out to all of our sponsors. And again, we will be doing a lot more giveaways, big giveaway on TikTok as well. So we'll be sharing a lot of those details. Again, big Texas, big Texas comic con is going to be coming in October. We're going to be at the convention center. So for hall of famer, Derek Gervin, it's Rudy Campos Jr., the non-Hall of Famer. Not yet, almost, but the non-Hall of Famer, Rudy Campos Jr. Until we sweep the league again, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody have a good night. You're Hall of Famer, Rudy. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Everybody. Hey there, sports fans. I'm Ashley, your go-to girl for all things sports here on Sweep the League. Welcome to our daily news reports where we'll be covering the latest updates from the NFL, NBA, WNBA, college sports, and more. We're thrilled to be a part of the rapidly growing Sweep the League network, bringing you fast and fresh news updates every day. Make sure to subscribe to Sweep the League TV on YouTube for even more in-depth analysis and discussions with our amazing team Monday through Friday. Huge thank you to our incredible sponsors in San Antonio for their support. We couldn't do it without you. So let's get started. I'm Ashley, and I'll be sweeping the league for you every day. Stay tuned for the latest sports news and updates.